Hello and welcome to Lecture 1 in JIT 230, Digital Illustration and Publishing. This lecture is going to talk about basically a uh, simple intro and overview of Photoshop and uh, image processing, manipulation, some of that kind of stuff that we're going to cover throughout the semester. So we'll talk about the role of Photoshop in the industry, how to navigate the interface in the work area in Photoshop, what that looks like. I realize that some people are masters of Photoshop already. They've been using it for quite a long time or they've taken other courses already, uh, as well as some folks that have probably never opened the program before in their lives and just downloaded and installed it for this class. So we're going to approach this with the lowest common denominator in mind and uh, go from there. But uh, if you've already used Photoshop before, don't worry, you'll learn new stuff in this class, I promise. Our first section here we'll talk about is some basic photo corrections. So that'll be the starting point. And then we'll go from there and global and localized edits and uh, some more technical and deep stuff as we move along. So first off, a little overview of the graphics industry. I realize in this class, we often have a lot of folks who are GIT students, but just as many who probably are not GIT students. So we're gonna talk about the graphics industry first, what it involves, what's entailed with the things that GIT students do when they graduate and the wide variety and breadth and depth of the industry as a whole. Um, the definition that you'll probably find online if you Google this is uh, the graphic industry is responsible for planning, designing and managing the production of visual communication in order to convey specific messages, clarify complex information or project visual identities. So, um, I read that to you because I wanted to get it out there, even though you can read this slide, I'm sure just fine. But that's something to think about. Managing the production of visual communication, that's really what GIT is all about. Um, there's a lot of things that in incorporate uh, the techniques that we learn in GIT and in graphic information technology and in specifically in this, this course. It's used for everything from video, animation, 2D, 3D stuff, websites, uh, printed products, packaging, billboards, car wraps down to the traditional things like flyers and bookmarks and uh, textual communications, things like that that you might see. But graphic design is incorporated in everything from the motion picture industry, video games, down to scientific and research and everything in between. So it's pretty broad. There are a lot of resources available to the, the graphics industry and to students especially. Uh, one that I wanna point out specifically, and these links will be in the PDF that you can download, but um, AIGA, the American Institute of Graphic Arts is kind of the premier organization that applies to graphic artists. Uh, on Poly, on the Polytechnic campus, we have our own chapter that's specifically for the JIT program and for our campus. It's arizona.aiga.org. So it's AIG, AIGA Poly is the name of our chapter. And you're welcome to join. Click on the link there, the OrgSync link. That'll get you to our chapter to sign up. It's an actual official A Arizona State University club. So it's a recognized student org. And uh, also you can join as an AIGA member. So not only are you a student member of our campus club, our ASU club, which is good for a lot of reasons, you're also a member of the actual AIGA organization too. So a lot of benefits there. I'll let you read more about it on those links. So judging by the standard age of students in this class, Photoshop's been around longer than most of you, <laughs> unless we have a typically uh, unusually old class. <laughs> that sounded bad, but you get the idea. Anyways, um, so Photoshop's been around for quite a while. It's it's on version, I don't even know what. They stopped counting versions and they're using years now. So we're on Photoshop CC 2017 version with the Creative Cloud. It's a little bit different. It's a subscription model. So you get updates. You don't pay for large um, updated versions every so often. It's just every, every so often when an update comes out, they implement it as soon as possible and then give it a year moniker. So anyways, read all about it there. There's a lot of information. You can see some of the progression. I just put this in for fun, those two graphics at the bottom. There's the progression of the icon for the application from the very beginning. On the toolbar on the right-hand side, you can see that it's progressed a little bit in the user interface of the program. And then that link, happy 25th anniversary Photoshop, check that out. There's a, an interesting blog post with a video that talks about how Photoshop has been around for a while. It's good information to know the background of it. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that any program that's been developed actively and used actively for over 25 years, 26 years now, maybe 27, I can't count. It's going to be a pretty big program. There's a lot that goes into it. It's a very complex program and there's a lot of features and functionality that have been added over time because obviously with that many upgrades and updates, they had to keep adding features to keep people interested in it. 
and to stay innovative. So um, it's pretty big. There's a lot to it. Once you get done with GIT 230, you're eligible to take GIT 334, Image Editing and Manipulation. That's an advanced Photoshop class. It's a full semester on just Photoshop. This class is half Photoshop, half Illustrator. So if you want to take the next step and get deeper into Photoshop once you finish this class, that's the next uh, step in your progression is to go to GIT 334. All right, so the basics of the interface. You have a couple of standard features, some that are familiar to you if you've used any computer program and some that are unique to Photoshop. The options bar, like most things, uh, has some options in it. That one is fairly standard for a lot. If you've used Microsoft Word or Excel or whatever, you have an options bar that should make pretty much sense to you. The application bar, that's pretty universal across most programs. You have a menu with file, edit, stuff like that. Now the options in Photoshop are pretty specific to Photoshop, but the operation should be fairly standard and intuitive to most of you. There's the tools panel, option C that you can see right there, and that's where you click on a tool and you do specific edits with a tool. We'll talk a lot more about each of these in depth as we go along. Um, D, if you look at the, the item labeled D over there in the top right, that one's somewhat new. Um, it's an in-app search, and with version 2017, it's pretty handy. Um, I recommend trying that out. Anytime you're not sure of where to find a tool or a command or a feature or a menu, uh, search in there. It's going to give you a list of things that are in the program itself. It's going to link you to web resources, videos, tutorials, assets that you can search and download, like uh, photos and things like that. Uh, Adobe Stock is tied into it. It's pretty helpful. There's the workspace switcher, which is going to toggle you between different workspaces. If you ever don't see the menu or the tool or the panel that you're looking for that you're familiar with, it's probably because your workspace got switched. Um, because there's so much in Photoshop, there's no way to display everything on the screen at once. It would be just too cumbersome. And so switching the workspace based on the task that you're trying to accomplish, whether that's web design stuff, uh, painting, 3D, whatever it is, you can switch for a workspace specific to that. And you can obviously save and customize your own workspaces. Panels, you'll see over there, um, F, lists and panels. They can be configured in any sort of arrangement that you want. They can be dragged and moved and floated all over the place. And they can be turned on and off. Um, just a few of the panels are being shown right now and it's taken up a lot of the screen. They can be collapsed and hidden. They can be nested with each other. Lots of things there. We'll get to that more on, down the road. And then the document window, um, that's going to show you tabs and things that let you um, navigate through your program more efficiently and effectively. All right, so here's what we talked about. I already went through a little bit of this stuff, but in the menu bar, you have the standard options, file and edit, and then more specific to Photoshop, image, layer, type, select, filter, view, window, help. Uh, you can click on file or click on the menu bar in Photoshop and go through each of those, and I highly recommend doing that. Make sure that you review each of those options, and you don't have to memorize it. You don't have to know what everything does, but it's a good practice to just familiarize yourself with what options are there. Don't, don't be completely unaware of what options are in the menu bar. So most everything that you can do in Photoshop, aside from the toolbars, you can access in some shape or form from the menu bar. And most of the things in the menu bar can be accessed using keyboard shortcuts. That's super, super helpful. Uh, I recommend as much as you can become familiar and uh, proficient with using keyboard shortcuts. Like in most programs, keyboard shortcuts save you a lot of time in Photoshop. A lot of the things that we do, and if you're going to use Photoshop professionally, especially keyboard shortcuts will save you um, minutes on a project, hours in a day, not hours in a day, but a lot of time in a day. It's going to save you hours of time if you use it long enough, and it's going to add up. So it makes it more convenient, makes it faster, makes you look really cool too. If you can whip through the program only using your keyboard and mouse not having to go into menus and things. <laughs> and that's what it's all about, right? The tool panel, um, you saw it back in that graphic. Let me jump back there real quick. So the tool panel right here has changed quite a bit, obviously, uh, but the same standard things are there, magnifying glass and paintbrush tool and some of those other things. Eraser, selection tools, type tool, and, and so on. Uh, these are things that you use with your mouse or whatever your input device is. If you use a touchpad or a stylus or whatever. Um, the side note, I highly recommend looking into like a tablet, a graphics tablet, a Wacom tablet. Um, they come in handy. I'm not telling you you need to go out and buy one and spend more money right away, but just think about it and look into it and do some research. If you're serious about using Photoshop a lot, uh, it can come in pretty handy and save you a lot of time. 
make it more pleasant to use as well. That toolbar is pretty uh, flexible as well. You can customize it uh, with a recent update in the past year or so, you can actually change what tools are displayed in it. So you only show the tools that you use on a regular basis. That's pretty new. It's been a long time coming, but that's there. Um, you can float it around, drag it. You can put it on multiple screens. You can have one screen just for your tools if you want to, although that might be overkill, but uh, endless possibilities of where you configure that and, and how you set it up. Using the tools, uh, when you're with your mouse, if you just put your cursor over any of those tools in the toolbar, it's going to give you a little pop-up instruction that tells you what the tool is, a screen tip. It's also going to show what the keyboard shortcut is, which is very helpful. Um, a lot of those tools are nested, meaning I'll show you a graphic on the next page that gives a better idea. But uh, they're nested, meaning there's a group of tools that are related to each other. For example, the brush tool is nested with the pencil tool and some other things. So we'll look at that. Using keyboard shortcuts is the fastest way to go between tools. If you're using your paintbrush in a certain location on the screen and you want to switch to a selection tool, for example, moving your cursor away from that location where you were just painting, clicking on the tool and then finding that location again is not difficult. But when you're doing that hundreds and hundreds of times throughout the day, it gets extremely tedious. Um, keyboard shortcuts will save you lots of time and make you a happier person in general. All right, so um, if you look at this right here, I've got the cursor over the crop tool, and as I hover over that, it gives a tool tip. It shows me the keyboard shortcut is C. That's nice to know, right? A lot of the options things. So in the top, you see the option there where I'm hovering over the feather setting in the options bar. It gives me an idea of what that setting or what that option does as well. It softens the edges of the selection. Don't worry too much about that specifically right now. I'm not going to quiz you right now on what those each do, but just be aware that's how you find out what they do. One way anyhow is you hover over that. Learning the keyboard shortcut is going to save you time. Another thing to be aware is see that little arrow in the right hand corner of each of the tool icons, a little arrow pointing down and to the right. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Maybe it's small, but what that means is that there's a nested group of tools there. If I were to click on that and hold down, it's going to give me more options. I can also on my keyboard and this was on the last slide, but press C to get the type, the crop tool. I can have sh shift while I'm, tapping C and it's going to cycle through all the nested tools in that group. Same thing with the brush family and the marquees and all the other tools. If they're nested, holding down shift while you type that keyboard shortcut is going to cycle through them pretty quick. All right. Document display. So, um, hopefully you guys have Photoshop open on a different, uh, you know, in the background here as you're watching this, cause I highly recommend, I should have said this at the beginning, but pause the video every so often. If you haven't yet, pause the video and open up Photoshop and you can follow along. And just every so often when you see something that I'm talking about, I don't have a lot of pictures in these slides. It's mostly just me talking with some text on the screen. I'm doing this with the intention of you having Photoshop open so you can uh, pause the video, switch over there or keep me playing in the background, whatever you like, and, and try this stuff out. So your document display is simply the area in the center of the screen where your document is displayed logically, right? It works in tabs. If you use a modern browser, you're familiar with the concept of tabbed browsing. Well, Photoshop is the same. You have tabs for each of those, but that's the default. You can also change it to float those windows, which you can with your tabs as well, or whatever. Um, going to windows in the menu bar, you can choose to arrange those and you can put two up side by side. You can link the zoom together. So let's say I'm working on a document where I want to do very zoomed in specific work or retouching. I can open up the same document in a different window, but have it zoomed out so that I'm looking at it at 400% zoom in one window. And I'm looking at the full size view in another so I can see the results at the same time in two windows, but different zoom factors, different magnification. It's pretty helpful. I'm cruising through a lot of this stuff right now. Again, don't worry about memorizing it. I'm just trying to give you kind of an overview of some of the things that are involved in Photoshop. Basic idea here is that the document display is pretty flexible. Um, if you're ever not sure of how to do something or why it looks the way it does as far as the document display, click on the window menu and arrange and then look at the options that are there and you'll be able to figure it out pretty easily. They have little icons that show you kind of a visual representation or a clue as to how it does it or what it does. 
All right, so the workspace, I told you before that there's a workspace switcher up in the top right hand side and you can switch through some preset workspaces based on the task that you're trying to do. Um, you can customize that. So anytime you move a panel around or change the toolbar or, or whatever, you can save that workspace. Um, it's pretty flexible. So uh, when you click on that workspace switcher, you'll see an option to save it. It'll give you, give you a chance to name it and save it. Uh, if you go through and you, let's say you're, you do a lot of typography work, you may decide that it, it makes sense to build a specific workspace showing the tools that you use all the time for that and hides the other things to give you more real estate on your screen. Uh, save it. It's not going to hurt you at all. You can save as many as you want. As far as I know, there's no, I've never run into a limitation on that. I'm sure there is one depending on your system's performance and stuff, but you'll be okay. Your panels are basically all the settings and modifications that you can do to image, to an image. Um, the panels are nested as well. So each panel can hold groups of tabs. So the panels will have tabs in them and you can nest panels in a panel and have groups of them together. So often you'll find like if you look at the layers panel in Photoshop, you'll see there's also a channels tab there depending on your workspace. The standard click on essentials for your workspace if you want to check it out yourself. But um, there's an options button that has a menu specific to that panel. It's in the top right hand corner. Looks like a little stack of lines on top of each other, a little rectangle with a bunch of lines. Top right corner of every single panel will have that. Click on that and just take a look at some of the options. It's contextual. It's different for each menu or each panel because it's a menu based on the settings for that specific panel. And so you'll get a lot more options there. Again, it's another way that Photoshop has found to nest all of the different features and options of a very complex program. You can't display every option in the panel itself. Every panel has its own menu as well. All right, so moving along here, once you've done a job or you're finished with a project or you're in the process where you need to stop or whatever, you need to be sure and save it. So this is one thing I wanted to get out of the way right up front in the class is making sure that you're aware of how to save your files. So if you're familiar with Word or any other program where you save stuff, this is pretty standard to understand, but just be aware that you need to know how to save your file and save as, and you know the difference between the two. Saving as is gonna create a duplicate of your document. It's gonna leave the original intact and save the most, up to, most recent edit that you've done as a new file. That's gonna double your hard drive storage. Obviously, it's gonna require more space, but it's also going to give you some redundancy and backup, essentially so you don't overwrite your changes and you keep a version history of your work. That may not matter for a lot of projects, but sometimes it will. Like big projects that you're working on, you make a major change, you're not sure if you wanna to commit to it permanently, um, or you're gonna repurpose something to be used for the web and for print, then you're gonna do save as and create multiple versions that way. There are a lot of other ways to work non-destructively, we'll talk about that a lot more in a later lecture. But just be aware of that when you're saving stuff, make sure you know where it's going and the difference between saving and save as. All right, closing your file, pretty standard. File, close, there's keyboard shortcuts to do all this. Command W or Control W will close a file. Control or Command Q will close the application. Um, if you haven't saved yet uh, and you've made some edits, it's gonna ask you if you wanna save it. So be aware again of save versus save as and uh, then you're good. So just to review, this was, um, like I said, a really fast paced overview of the application. Uh, hopefully it made some sense and you followed along in Photoshop, but um, chime in in the, in the group discussion if you have any questions and make sure that you do the reading and we'll see you later.